Great. Hi and welcome to all of you. I'm, I'm so super nervous and I'm super excited to get the chance to give you some insights into my classroom. I, I hope you can, I can give you a view from a teacher to other teachers. And um, so many greetings from my beautiful hometown here in Steyr. So this is actually not right now a pic I took last uh, night, but this is my beautiful ancient hometown. And also there are some other people on the call, so a big shout out to all around the world. There's even someone from Sri Lanka here, so I'm feeling pretty honored that this webinar is so, so, so fully packed with a crowd. So I'm living here in Steyr since 10 years, and um, when I'm not flying around as a one-note avenger, as you probably see on the screen, I'm teaching mathematics and physical education at my school. That's the business school, Hack Steyr. And just uh, small remarks, there are about 700 uh, students here aged between 15 and 19 years old. And we're about 80 educators here. So that's a big school and it's a really modern school and we have a lot of technology here. And we also Office 365 Showcase School and there where we can use a lot of cool things. Uh, provided by Microsoft. So I want to start with a quote by one of my, I think it's everybody's favorite speaker, uh, Sir Ken Robinson. You probably know him from all his great TED Talks. And he said at the TED, uh, at the Bet Show in 2015 in London, the symphony orchestra is a toolkit, an electrical guitar is a tool. It doesn't give you any music. You need great musicians to do that. And as a teacher, we always, always have used tools like chalkboards and, and books or calculators or sliders. So now with technology, these tools are more sophisticated, but also more complex. And when I'm talking today about OneNote as my favorite tool for teaching, you have to be aware that this is just a tool. Uh, it doesn't give you any great teaching or great learning. So you need great teachers like you in the audience and you need great students to, to get great learning experiences. And, and that's just some small examples you could get from my point of view. So keep in, in mind that all these things I'm going to show you today are not about tools or apps. They are just about my personal learning and teaching style. And I hope you can take some of these examples with you. So my personal story, just very short why I am using one note. I started teaching maths in, back in 2006. And you know, there's a lot of things in maths you have to do with the hand. So working on a chalkboard is, was a daily work uh, for me, like this man on the picture. But my chalkbox, chalkboards looked uh, a bit like more like this. You can see this. So I also didn't have that great um, cool tuxedo. But basically, this was me doing all kind of calculations on the chalkboard. And I have to admit, I love working on a chalkboard, on the blackboard. I, I really like to develop thoughts and topics. Uh, and I think that's very important to, to develop things in front of the students' eyes so they can see, especially in maths, so they can see how, how something is evolving and, and they can see the process of, this, of it. And of course, as a... Uh, some of my students said uh, maths has to be done by hand. Not only you have to uh, write down a lot of mathematical expressions like you see in the picture. Um, I really love to, to scribble down things, to visualize things, to, to, to draw things, to explain things. And I think that's, that's very imp important for teaching maths, not to show off the, the final results, but also the way and that was my problem, basically. I also used, of course, a lot of other things like a, a, a projector and binders and, and even computers. And I really like this analog world. I have to admit that, that I really like this analog world. And as I call the chalkboard, <laughs> chalkboard world, because there are a lot of great tools you get uh, for teaching mathematics. On the other hand, of course, I was using technology a lot. And um, that's how I, I tried to combine all these kinds of things. So my, my um, favorite tool of technology, the math teacher among the audience will recognize this. 
is GeoGebra. I think there's no better uh, math software than this in the world. You can easily use this for calculation, but also as a teacher, you, you use it for, for explaining things. And that's very powerful because not only the students can play around with things, you can show them really, really hard core mathematical concepts. And that's why I was struggling for five, six, seven years to, to, to combine these two worlds, to combine technology and, and chalkboards, the analog world. Because I think uh, you have to take the, the best of, out of both worlds, the analog and the digital, because every word has, has benefits. It's not a uh, this way or this way. You, you have to combine this. And there was one night when I was teaching at the evening school. Uh, I spent four hours in, in writing down things over the overhead projector. And I thought, wow, I will go blind if I have to look another minute into this light. And so I thought I have to change something. I, the, 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 after, the next day after that, I, I strictly uh, bought myself a very expensive stylus PC. And I tried to, to start annotating with this and, and try to go uh, digital with, with this uh, stylus PC. I was very luckily uh, to, to, and I'm very thankful uh, that I quickly discovered OneNote back in 2009. And since then, I, there have not been a single day in my life where I've not worked with OneNote both at work and privately. So I, I put all my things into OneNote as not only the, the work, uh, working stuff. So I quickly transformed my daily working routine to a uh, digital school bag. So this is basically my, my, my setting for, for every day in my school. I started preparing lessons in one of them, tried to do as many things as possible paperlessly. So I started five, six years ago to write down all the things in my classes uh, that I've written down on, on, the, on the chalkboard. And thanks to the sharing functionality, I could provide my students with all the documents and all the class resources I was um, developing in my lessons. For me, the OneNote and, and the Digital Inc. has completely transformed the way I teach. So at the beginning, it was just enhancing my, my teaching style with digital tools. You just copying the analog thing and, and put it into a digital thing. But soon I felt that this is truly transforming uh, the way I teach, and, and maybe you're familiar with the SAMR model by uh, Ruben Puentetura. It's really great. I, I don't want to uh, get too much into the detail, but I found myself exactly going through these steps from substitution to augmentation to modification and redefinition, and, and I, I think that's very important if you use it, such a powerful tool uh, like OneNote. You have to rethink uh, what you can do and, and I think you can uh, really redefine things like teaching maths. For, uh, I want to show you some examples, yeah. And I think that the same thing we could do with teaching uh, is also with uh, learning. So with tech, we're enabling students to transform learning. So they are the 21st century learners. and. I think that's very important to give them not only the tools to do the same thing we have done in the last 200 or 2,000 years in mathematics, just to change things uh, step by step. Dirk told me uh, that uh, you've already seen my world, my math video, so probably I won't show it this uh, today uh, again. But you can see in this, you have seen in this video that that we are trying. To, to change what math education uh, looks like with OneNote and with GeoGebra, with my students, just some screen grabs. And I'm, I'm really proud that these are really, really, um, uh, these are real examples from my classes. So we have done all the three things, and I will show you in a minute uh, within the OneNote binder. So let's switch to the OneNote binder to give you some ideas. Uh, to show you some examples. I will share my screen and Dirk should give me a thumb up if everybody could see my screen. Okay, here we go. More feedback. 
Anybody could see my showcase OneNote here. I think that's good. Yeah, thanks, Philip. Yes, we can see it as well, Kurt. Great, thank you very much. And so here we are in OneNote. I'm, I'm presenting now directly from OneNote. I've prepared some some typical pages. Let's switch to the first page. Oh, yeah, here's the cursor. And just don't be afraid of, of this math stuff. Just this is a one uh, exactly a one uh, a page from uh, last uh, month or two months ago. We did something like that. So that's how it develops. Um, my that that's how my classes and my lessons develop. And just for understanding, I, I plug in my Surface in my classroom to present wirelessly, uh, so my students can follow um, the work on the projector. So I use this OneNote uh, a lot for a digital uh, whiteboard, for example. So we do not have whiteboards, but we, but we do have uh, a projector in every classroom. Uh, I write down things and I attach a lot of files, so that's not really new for a lot of people for you. And that's what I like most because I'm, I'm really free. I have a lot of space to collaborate, uh, to, to, um, to, to um, use a lot of uh, things. Like, for example, I put in all the, the GeoGebra files I'm using, and maybe I could show something. So that's the that's kind of teaching style I do. OK, sorry for that. I tried once again. Uh, so you could see, for example, so oops, here we go again. Oops. But it works. On the other hand, that's no problem if, if you can see the. Um, the algebra file, it's no problem, but you get a pretty good idea on how I'm using uh, different math tools or oh, no, mm -hmm. uh, different math tools and, and I do some screen shotting and put all the things we have discussed in this particular lesson into OneNote. So that's kind of um, a whole collection. Another page I want to show you, uh, probably you, you recognize this from the video. So this was the actual um, a lesson behind the video. So we did a, a calculation on our school building. And you can see a lot of trigonometric calculations. And these are just the results. The cool thing was that we went outside. And as you can see on the picture, I could use OneNote on my phone to take the pictures and, and work within one environment. So I don't have to bother with syncing or getting all the things together. That's just one page in the classroom, one notebook. And we can we went back to the classroom and then we did the, the whole calculations. After that, after this lessons, uh, the students went home, and they had to do a quite similar uh, assignment, a quite similar project. And as you can see, these are some student projects on the same topic. Um, I think this was Anya, and Anya he did a she did a great project on measuring her wall and as you can see she put in all her uh, calculations and and drawings with uh, pictures and there's another one example like uh, calculating the side of the neighbor house just to see how my students are using OneNote and that's pretty uh, useful because I can clearly see that this has, has been done by Clara and they put in all the work and I can easily give them feedback. These students are lacking a, a, a tablet PC so they have to write down things on paper and if they are uh, using paper I have uh, told them they should take a photo and put it into OneNote um, but I will show you some other things. Okay, I hope I'm not too fast and you can see all things so Stop me if there's something unclear. Um, I think we, we got some time uh, later to, to, to for some questions. So here are some examples, other students' examples. Um, uh, talking about homework, for example. Take this one. Yeah, here we go. 
uh, you could see that this is an example from a student uh, that is working with a tablet PC with a stylus enabled PC and she's doing all her beautiful homework and her handwriting stuff uh, within this one of class notebooks. This is just of a kind of um, shifting the analog world to the digital work, uh, world and this is nothing new. So let me show you some other examples. Back to my overview page. Here we go. So I do a lot of digital assignments, and probably I switch now to the uh, to the view where you can see the pages. And I do a lot of um, digital assignments. Uh, before one or the always let them do and uh, let them work on paper and, and with digital tools. And now it was very hard to to get my hands onto this work because they handed in the paper late and they had to struggle with how to print out the digital work and all these kind of things. And now within this assignment, I followed the uh, inverted classroom model. So the students get the link here on YouTube so they can um, get the input by video. And they documented all the work within these kind of uh, sheets. And you can see there are some yellow pages or yellow uh, spaces where they could fill in their work and their answers. And every student had this um, assignment and so I could really correct this and give them feedback and I collect this digitally. So that's a kind of reforming and redefining what can be done. Uh, I did the same, the exactly same thing on, on paper, but now I can get uh, closer to the students' work and I can even give them feedback uh, and do not have to wait until they, they hand it in. So another thing, let's go back, uh, like this one from Stefan, um, uh, they had to work on, on some final test examples and, and Stefan did very well on that, so he put in all his, his work and as you could see, they are working with GeoGebra, they are calculating, they are graphing with this within, uh, also within Excel. And here's another thing I want to show you, some, some really cool thing, because I said, okay, uh, Stefan, could you please explain to the other students what have you been doing, what are you have been do, uh, what have you done? Sorry for that. And the cool thing uh, on this is that that um, he just made a, a screencast and he put it into this OneNote uh, page and there he explained what he did and for me this is very important you could easily see what he has done in this 10 minutes because this only I can do this only by using technology by using OneNote and uh, a screencasting uh, software uh, so Stefan has proven to use far more skills than just uh, calculating in maths. He can even explain things and, and why he has done uh, these calculations. And for me that's very important. For me that's the first time I can, I can hear my students talk and, and uh, hear my students think and give them uh, feedback on that. And Another thing that's really, really, um, really good for me is that uh, I can use this explanation uh, to give it to other students if they have the same problems with the same um, um, uh, test uh, examples. So let's switch back to another example. Uh, the same principle you can find here like uh, uh, Laura has done a, a great presentation on an example and she embedded the PowerPoint file. So that's really awesome to see how she has um, developed a, some kind of presentation and, and written down all the necessary steps, uh, what she has to do to solve this problem. For me, it's, it's very, very easy to distribute this to other students, to use this for other explanations, and, and that's why I love OneNote. Not only for me as a teacher, but, but um, to see how the students are evolving their skills far more than, uh, than just calculating things. Okay, I think you get the idea of what this point is all about. So, some other 
things and probably you're familiar with that. I do a lot of digital assignments with OneNote. I prepare these sites, these pages for them. Here we are. And there are a lot of examples there. And uh, probably you've heard of the new um, um, class notebook add-in where you can easily distribute this page. It's just a right click and I can uh, distribute this page to every student section. And then the students work directly into this OneNote over their own PC or over the, the, the computer lab or even on the smartphones. And here is one example again from um, from Michael. Uh, he did some explanation here with the audio uh, feature and I really love that audio feature because now it's also possible in, in the OneNote web app and they can talk to their um, to their examples. So that's kind of uh, the same thing. I, want, I wanted to show you this because I use this feature, this audio feature a lot for giving feedback. So I start correcting as you could see with the red uh, pencil, but I also uh, start correcting sometimes by clicking insert audio and then I give them verbal feedback so they can really get some ideas what they have done right and what is wrong. Okay, some more examples. I'm, I'm, I've prepared some two or three more examples. Uh, that is something that I want to show that you can see that students are kind of organizing themselves in different ways in their sections. So they are organizing with pages and with, uh, with um, uh, different sections. The cool thing about one of this is that they can use it and they can access it years after and now, for now it's very important for them because we all have now four or five notebooks from every year, from every um, uh, school year and now they can go back to, to this and learn from the final exams because in, in three weeks they will have to pass final exams and they can easily re-collect their things and re-arrange things and, and learn with these things even on the smartphones, even from a web app. And yeah, you could, hear, uh, you could see here that we're also using a lot of Excel files for calculating financial mathematical things. And they're pretty used to, to, um, to use uh, technology in the classroom because they are allowed to use technology at the final exams. So that's really powerful for me as a teacher uh, that they can rely on Excel or GeoGebra in, in the exams and I know that's that's quite different to other countries but that's why I, I use this in my classes in my everyday uh, math classes uh, so they uh, get used to use this thing this technology okay I think I got one more left I will switch back to this demo and here again some digital assignment. Let's see, here we go. Where I want to show you just one thing. It's I've done this uh, before on, on paper, but here I've created an Office Mix. Probably you're uh, familiar with Office Mix. And as I told you before, I, I use a lot of the, the inverted classroom model because I only have two hours of uh, uh, math lessons per week, so use this. So I have to use this time very, very wisely. And for explanational things, I'm creating sometimes, not al always, uh, sometimes some office mixes that are not. Um, these are not just videos. These are interactive guides where they can, uh, where my students can get the information and also do some small assignments. So they have to answer small questions and I can even see if they are doing it and what they are doing. So I just wanted to show you this uh, example. So they just click on a link and with the new feature of, of Office 2016, you can even embed this kind of Office mixes. So that's pretty close to an interactive textbook and I really love this kind of functionality of OneNote because all is stored in one place. For example, just to see here is a feedback, audio feedback uh, from mine. And as you can see also the yellow boxes where the students put in their screenshots and the, uh, their answers. 
Okay. So I could go on lots, lots, lots of hours and show you lots of examples. Probably you've seen this that I've I'm using very, very, very uh, many uh, note class notebooks for every year for every class. I'm using different class notebooks, but even for uh, my private things like my guitar things and so on. Uh, I want to point out how this is done, and this is one of my personal uh, highlights because this year in, in 2015, in September 2015, uh, we could start a Tablet Plus class, as we call it here at the Hack Steyr. Uh, there, every student has got his or her own surface, and we are using one of the class notebooks in all 16 subjects. So, depending on the teacher, of course. But that's pretty pretty amazing because they are really transforming from an analog world to a digital class and they do not use um, textbooks or, or, or binders anymore. And just one small, um, I've already shown something from Mali. She's, she has got one of the most beautiful handwriting I've ever seen. But you can see that, that here I am organizing myself. I'm up here with the teacher section or with the collaboration sec section. And here are the students section. You're probably familiar with this. And that's pretty, pretty awesome for me to, to put in all the things we're working on and, and, and do all things digital. And we're collecting a lot of things here within this class notebook. As I mentioned before, there is the new class notebook plugin which is working really, really beautiful, and I can easily prepare my lessons. I don't want to show this right now, but where I can prepare lessons, for example, here we go, uh, prepare these uh, lessons, these examples, or these examples for my students, and I just have to do one click and distribute it in their sections, for example, here for E12. Y12 and and I'm done and and the same thing you could do with um, uh, with the correcting or with the assignments when you just uh, want to see what the students have done. I get some a small pop-up and for example you had to do some examples uh, for homework and as you can see I can easily click through the names and see whether they have done a homework or not and easily correct this. So this is pretty, pretty uh, amazing for me as a teacher and, a, and I, I really have a lot of, uh, I, spend, I spend a lot of time in correcting and giving them feedback and these, these um, one of class notebook add-in uh, saves a lot of time for me. Okay, so where I'm stuck, once again, coming back to this. Some more things, I've already uh, collected these things. Uh, the one with class notebook add-in, I already mentioned Office Mix. Uh, you have to take a look at this, it's really powerful because you can easily create po uh, with PowerPoint slides interactive um, learning environments. I, I love this, this tool because it's not just watching a video, you can also uh, put in uh, some kind of questions, some interactive uh, apps, so that's really, really powerful. And as I mentioned before, for every math teacher, uh, GeoGebra is an absolute must. So, okay, uh, two more minutes, coming back to uh, the presentation, or coming back to uh, two more slides I wanna show you. Here we go back to the presentation. Yep. Hopefully you are, you, are no, you are here. And I just want to emphasize on, on, on how important we are as a teacher. We, we, we will not be replaced by tech. That's for me for certain. But when we are using technology in our classrooms, uh, we are more important than ever. So if you want to use tools like OneNote.GeoGebra, you have to really rethink what you are doing. And you get a lot of uh, ideas and you get a lot of possibilities. But I think the most important thing is, as a teacher, to think uh, what is the most useful thing to, to engage my students, to get them 
into the learning to get them uh, to be 21st century learners. And there's a saying uh, like, with great power comes great responsibility. And I want to finish my presentation with uh, OneNote gives you superpowers, so use them wisely. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope there are some questions. Thanks. Kurt, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you clear and loud. So, first of all, thank you very much for your uh, for your great presentation and your your examples of how you're using OneNote in the uh, in your classroom. Um, and let me give you one big round of applause with the whole audience who was very much listening here. I hope I hope you you heard as well, but because the the, the round of applause was very hard and people were very patiently uh, listening to your stories and your thank examples. You, you. But I can imagine there are, there are some questions uh, on the on the cool stuff you're doing. So uh, let me try to uh, to see if there are any que questions in the in the room, and uh, I'll try to moderate. Okay, great. Zijn er vragen? Mag het Nederlands? Kan ik het vertalen? Yeah. Yeah. So, Kurt, one of the questions was um, um, some uh, interest in how much extra time do you spend in creating classes, um, yeah. um, making the assignments in OneNote, apart from the, the actual lessons you you give so, so during a week. I, I was expecting that question, but it's, it's, it looks like, a, like I'm living with OneNote or in front of OneNote, but, but that's not really true. I'm, I have done a lot of things with uh, paper too, and I get my time from a lot of other things. So for example, I'm, I'm using uh, some, some auto-correcting examples with my Tablet Plus class, so where I don't have to to go the, the final results uh, through and, and see whether they have calculated it right or wrong. So I can give them just feedback on how they are doing. And uh, this, this is where I get a lot of time from because in math I don't really have to, to, to recalculate the things that they are doing. And of course I've shown a lot of uh, examples um, summarized that I've done in the last few years uh, and, and, and uh, last few months, so this is kind of a, a highlight show and, and there are also a lot of things that I'm not really, uh, there are a lot of weeks where I'm just doing the basic stuff, so don't be that much impressed with my time spent, <laughs> uh, spent on, on these uh, assignments. And Kurt, could it be that you also uh, reuse any work you made in the past? So, for instance, the work you did for uh, last year, you of can use course. it again for this this year's class. Yeah, of course. And, and this is the one of the coolest things for one of because I, I store everything digital, digitally, and then I can um, uh, go up right to that and put it in, in the next class book. And I even use, uh, with permission of the students, uh, the students' uh, work. So if Stefan, for example, has explained this example very, very good, I'm going up, um, I see him and, and I say, and I ask him, can I use this for other classes? And he always said, yeah, for certain, because then, then it matters to them. If, if, they, if they are doing just for me, just for, giving, uh, for getting a grade, then they just say, okay, let's get this grade and out of here. And if they are knowing, okay, uh, this is a work that could be uh, of use for other students, for other colleagues, then they are really, really uh, working hard on it. And, and that's why I, sp uh, I get a lot of time from, because I do a lot of uh, similar examples, and, and so I can use, reuse not only my work, but, only, uh, but also the students' work. Any other questions? So every every year the the classes change, Kurt. And and how can you manage this with um, um, uh, with with the ending with the ending uh, with the ending of every uh, of every class? Uh, okay, okay. So I I um, in September I always create the one of class notebook for this dedicated class. And in Austria, they are more or less the same class over in my school for five years. But I always end in June the class notebook 
And then I close this class notebook. I do not um, delete it, but I, I close it on my PC. And then in September, we start with a new one, with new topics. But I can reuse this from other classes that I'm teaching up to right now. There are seven or six classes. And I can use a lot of things from, from the past years, of course. So that's how I work. I, I create a dedicated one of class book every year for my students. Okay. Okay. So, so Kurt. Yeah. So once more, um, it was more. The question was more related to um, how you would manage the content and ah, synchronize okay. this with. Yeah, I understand. Right. Okay, I understand. I I come up with this, just a simple mm -hmm. idea. I, I maybe I could show you. This is a kind of. Uh, I just want to uh, describe it for you. I I create a dedicated OneNote class, a uh, uh, OneNote uh, notebook, uh, just for my resources, where I put in all my resources for different classes. So there are different section groups. Uh, depending on the topics, and uh, this is kind of a of a master class, uh, a master notebook, and then I simply drag and drop or, or copy and paste it to my students, uh, to my actual class notebook. So that's uh, the kind of thing I am arranging these. Does this answer the question? Well, more like, more like. But I what like I'll do, it. Kurt, is uh, I'll I'll leave your I'll leave your contact details. So um, if he wants any any further direction or information regarding this topic, he can always uh, contact you. Yeah. <laughs> given given the time, I, th I just want to jump to maybe another question. Was one. Microsoft expert. What do we need to do to work with notebooks like you do? <laughs> so, so the question was, Kurt is a Microsoft expert, and and what should we do? What do we have to do to become a uh, an expert like you? Well, um, let me partially let me let maybe not an expert, but let me let me partially answer uh, answer this question as well because there are a lot of resources Microsoft already offers uh, partially on the on the educator community, which I will um, uh, highlight later on this day, and uh, also uh, all sorts of trainings in persons. Uh, we work with uh, training partners for OneNote. And of course, we want to bring you in contact with all kinds of great examples we already have on uh, teachers from all over the world using OneNote, um, from primary school up until universities, from all sorts of uh, types of studies and, and colleges. <laughs> and maybe you can uh, you can add to this, Kurt. Uh, yeah. What uh, what did it take for you to become an expert? <laughs> most important thing is is that what we are doing right now, exchanging our ideas, exchanging um, how we are working. And, and having a conversation about this, because I I started seven or eight years ago, seven years ago doing things with OneNote, and I've developed my kind of, of teaching style, and I've learned a lot of things by looking over uh, and, and looking at at other colleagues from all around the world. There was no one in Austria using this kind of technique or, or this kind of environment, and and the best thing is to to open your mind, to open your eyes. Watch out for, for social media, for uh, for blogs, for teachers who are willing to share. And, and I think the, the PIL network, or the educator network as it's now called in uh, from Microsoft, is one of the best networks where you can easily grab one expert from the other side of the world and, and talk to him. And for me, for just one example for me, there was uh, Keller Armstrong from Appleby College in, in Canada. I, I have never met him for five or six years and and he was giving so much away on how they, he is using uh, OneNote in his classes and and that's in my opinion the most important thing. And last uh, sentence and last tip, uh, there's pretty good, uh, I would say amazing um, educational stuff on OneNote, especially in OneNote at the OneNote.com, uh, OneNote4Teachers.com thing. 
uh, website. So this is for me the best start when you want to get more into OneNote because these these are really good uh, how tos and uh, they give you a lot of examples on how to use OneNote as a teacher. Thanks, Gerd. Let me let me final check if there's any other question. Yes, I see one more. So, Kurt, are our students used to use OneNote on other school uh, uh, topics and subjects as well, or is it just at your uh, <coughs> at your course? I I would say I want to start a, um, a revolution in in my high school, but we, as I see that other colleagues are are, are coming up, are, ca are catching up, they are using it for their um, uh, classes. So in the Tablet Plus class uh, with the 29 students, in every class they are using, in every subject they are using OneNote. And there are some other kind of uh, projects we're using OneNote, but they are not really used to. So this is a growing process and, and it has to grow. But I would say, let's see where we are in, in five years now. As I know that there are uh, schools around the world, for example, the Apropy College or even in New Zealand schools, that are using OneNote 100% in every subject, in every class. So it's kind of a development, and I hope I can transform my school to get these things more and more into uh, the daily life. Let me let me get back to this one in Dutch as well. Dus, um, um, wat Kurt nu zegt, dat is heel typerend. Dat zien we in Nederland echt wel op heel veel plekken. Hè? Dus die, die innovatie die komt eigenlijk vanuit één plek. En, en één docent begint er mee. We hebben, niet, we hebben niet heel veel innovatieve scholen in Nederland, maar we hebben wel ontzettend veel innovatieve klassen, innovatieve docenten. Uh, en dat zijn vaak nog een beetje eilandjes en dat, dat breidt zich zo wel uit. Uh, maar we kunnen jullie altijd in contact brengen met uh, naar andere zeg maar, succesvolle voorbeelden waar we al um, ja, wanneer het op bredere schaal uh, gebruikt wordt binnen een organisatie. Maar organisaties of instellingen waar het al overal helemaal gebruikt wordt, die zijn, uh, ja, die zijn misschien op één hand te tellen. Ja. Nou, het grappige is eigenlijk dat het gebruik van OneNote zo ontzettend eenvoudig is dat de meeste scholen of de meeste klassen waar we tegenkomen die het helemaal niet ervaren als dat er nog heel veel tijd geïnvesteerd in, in het gebruik van OneNote zelf moet gebeuren. Want het mooie eigenlijk aan is... pakken de leerlingen het zelf op en die gaan... Je hebt vaak de leerlingen die al heel vaardig zijn met computers en die gaan dan met z'n tweeën dingetjes uitlopen dokteren en die zeggen dan, uh, nou meneer de docent, uh, ik zal je even laten zien hoe dat werkt, dat, dat probleem waar u mee zit, dat uh, hebben wij al opgelost. Dus ja, die omgevingen die zijn er dus ook. Ja. En het mooie, het is, een, het is een toolbox die je natuurlijk ontzettend breid, breed kan inzetten, maar je kan ontzettend klein beginnen ook. En je hoeft niet meteen op dag 1 het, het meeste eruit te halen. Kirsten. I think we should highlight that we have another OneNote expert in the audience. Ja, ja, dus de, uh, heel terecht wat Kirsten zegt, uh, we hebben hier nou, de, de werelds enige OneNote MVP, zoals Microsoft dat dan heel mooi zegt. En, ja, niet de enige, nou, de enige Nederlandse, sorry, ik moet het goed zeggen, enige Nederlandse. En, um, en Marjolein weet ontzettend veel van OneNote en uh, nou, ik geloof dat je ook al vaak in contact bent geweest met andere expert educators die, uh, die ook veel, ook met Kurt, die ook veel uh, OneNote in de klas inzetten. Dus, nou, als er iemand is die, die hier ook ontzettend veel over weet en je meer kan vertellen op welke uh, mogelijke manier je het in kan zetten, dan is uh, Marjolein... Uh... Dus dit ook. <laughs> heel goed, heel goed. Um, uh, given the time, uh, Kurt, um, is, there any, is there any other question from the audience or...? <coughs> okay, so Kurt, um, I want to thank you very much for your time. And, uh, and showcasing us uh, what you're doing with, with OneNote and how you're using it and, and, and well, improving the collaboration and communication with your students. And um, well, I think it's, uh, it's appropriate if we give you another round of applause because uh, the audience was very happy with you. Is there anything else you want? Thank you yeah, and bye-bye sure. and I hope I stay in contact with lots of you and 
feel free to, to reach out uh, to me or uh, to read my blog where I post a lot of things. So have a nice day there and, and many greetings from Steyr again. See you. Bye. Thanks, Gerd.